educate. <laughs> George McCracken at Timberland High School. Uh, just about everything. Okay. <laughs> Denise Rush, King Hoare Elementary Middle, and I love the, vid the veggies. Right. Physical education and health teacher there. Great, great. Karen Neesmith, King Hoare Elementary Middle School. Um, let's see, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, English language arts. I like everything. Yes. <laughs> I'm David Romine uh, at Social Studies at Beach Creek High School, and I like uh, stories of American history. Okay. Parker Tye at Beach Creek High School as well, Social Studies, and I'm going to go with Pepper Row. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> it looks like we're, we're going to have a green pepper battle over here, too. Um, I didn't share, I, I could live off Hawaiian pizza, so the ham and the pineapple, oh, I could live off of that. Um, Chris, do you want to share yours? Um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I have a correction. Yes, okay. Somebody not paying attention here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with the mushrooms. Mushrooms? Okay. I run an internet radio station called Radio from Florence and also have a video production company out of Florence. And I'm allergic to all milk and dairy products, so but if I could eat it, it would be all cheese. For sure. <laughs> Alright, thanks for sharing, Chris. Um, Chris also made the uh, the educational video, so um, it's great having him having him along in the uh, in his expertise in that, but th thanks for sharing. Um, it's interesting, I see a lot of special education uh, teachers in here and that's wonderful. Uh, remind me at the end of class, um, there's a new program that I'm gonna be uh, trying to implement, therapeutic gardening, <clears throat> and we've done, we've partnered with Adaptive Gardens of the Low Country in McClellanville. So um, talk to me about, about that after, after um, the presentation. I, I didn't include it in here, but it's wonderful to see and we would love to see if we can work together on on a therapeutic garden program. Um, but first of all, okay, so the park itself is, is located in Monk's Corner. It's 200 acres, and it's, um, and it's a uh, small area, but there's a lot. It's a really dynamic piece of land, and there's a lot going on there. Oh, I find it. Now it doesn't work. Okay. And so it's, it's, it's named after the Santee Canal, which is, at, is, which is the first canal ever built in America. It was built in, in 1800. And um, so there's a lot of the history there, the swamp. We also have a 160-year-old plantation house there as well, the Stony Landing House. And it's also the site of the construction of the Little David, which is the first semi-submersible to attack an enemy ship. Um, actually precedes the Hunley, and um, it was built there on site. So there's a lot of that history there. Um, there's also a lot of it in, uh, environmental aspect. Of the 200 acres, about 150 of that is swamp. So we have a lot of, you know, four miles of boardwalk. We have canoe trails. Inside the interpretive center, which is the main building here, we've got a live educational animal exhibit that is, is on display. And then I, I also bring into the, uh, to my programs as well. We also do a lot of festivals. Um, Fourth of July, Oyster Rose is, is, is the next one coming up. And so there's a lot going on in just a small little piece of property. And, and I, all, all the time I'll get oh, I didn't know you guys were back here. You know, I've been here all my life and I never knew about the park. So um, it's a small piece of land, but there's a whole lot going on, a, um, a whole lot of good, interesting stuff going on. And really what, what the park is kind of shifting to, I mentioned sustainability earlier, but the park itself is really um, trying to focus more on becoming more sustainable. Uh, the park is owned by Sandy Cooper, which has a lot of sustainable initiatives as well. But some of the aspects of the park, we're looking at, you know, making our uh, maintenance ve vehicles biodiesel. Uh, the Oyster Roast is 100% is renewable power. And, you know, we're looking at some of our, our, of our waterways to make them more efficient. But really, what we're here today is talk about the education. And so that's really what a, a focus of the educational program as well is, is this aspect of sustainability. And before we get that, it's, we've all heard that word before, but it's kind of a dynamic word. And so, just real quick, I want you guys to, uh, you know, with the person next to you, just for a minute or two, see if you can come up with the one sentence definition of sustainability. There's someone next to you. And then I'll, and, and then I'll tell you the right answer. <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 things that 
continue this presentation and, and, and as I break out the word sustainability or sustainable or sustainable concepts, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, does anyone care to share an aspect or a definition of sustainability? Land does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, flow resource. Alright, flow resource. Okay, do you want to elaborate on that? Perpetuating an environmental condition using flow resources. Okay. So perpetuating. Did I spell that right? <laughs> Did I spell that right? All right. Environmental. All right. Anyone else care to share? Being able to take care of yourself. Taking care of yourself. Great. Anyone else? Excellent. Anyone else? Reusable. Reusable. <laughs> Chris, you got this guy leaving here. <laughs> All right, anyone else? Okay, suffi um, sufficient? Self-sufficient. Self okay. All right. Anyone else? Get her done environmentally. Get her done environmentally. <laughs> Get her done. All right. Great. That's pretty much su su sums it up. Like I said, it's kind of a dynamic word, but the often... Um, Accepted uh, definition is meeting our needs today without compromising the future's ability to meet their needs. So that's basically what sustainable is in a nutshell, is doing what we have to do today. Um, Self-sufficient, responsible, taking care of yourself today without compromising the, the future um, ability to, to take care of themselves. And that was from a multinational uh, summit back in 1983, and that was kind of the definition to talk about sustainability and sustainable um, development. So when, when I use it, that's basically the general definition that I'll use um, today when I you break that word out again. Okay. So I'll tell you a little bit about uh, the Parks Education Program. Uh, one of the plans that I have here is to, uh, first of all, work with um, other environmental education centers around the, um, around the nation. I've, I've made a few interviews in Vermont, a couple in Boston, some in North Carolina, Tennessee, and kind of just network with other environmental educators and kind of get an idea of what they're doing, bounce ideas off of each other, and really just kind of work together because we're all working towards the same goal. So what I've done is, is, is I've interviewed a few of these facilities and then I also assessed the South Carolina state standards and really assess them uh, on the aspects of sustainability and sustainable concepts as to where as to where it's lacking, where it's present, where we can fill it in and, and also try and make our programs um, align more with the state standards. All right. And so the next thing I did was I surveyed all Berkeley County teachers. Did you guys fill out the survey? No? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I did. Well, you got it in your email. Um, I sent out a survey to all Berkeley County teachers and, and kind of get an idea of what they're looking for in, in, in educational program, field trips, outreach, and also as well as um, kind of what their idea of, of sustainability is. So from that survey, I formed a focus group, which is basically a, it consisted of some teachers, uh, park staff, and, and other environmental educators, and we analyzed the results of this data in the survey. <coughs> 